Now, the purpose of the woman was to come to be a helper. So to be a helper required that she would have certain skills. So God did not just say, I'll make a helper and then left, just created anything. He made something better than what he had made. If someone wants to help you, they have to be better at that thing than you, right? How would you employ someone who cannot do something? So God said, let me make a woman. This woman will help this guy. So he put some things. In fact, the interesting thing about that word, helper, is that the word is originally Isa. And that is the word that describes the helper side of God. So when we say Jehovah Ebenezer, okay, it's the same word that also describes the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit only helps you if you allow him to help you. It's the same way a woman is supposed to function. A woman will only help, is supposed to only help you if you allow her to help you. The second thing that God puts in a woman is wisdom. In fact, if you read the entire book of Proverbs, when, the, when, they're relate, when they're referring to wisdom, they don't use he. They use she, meaning that it can equate it to a woman. There are some scriptures I pray over myself from the book of Proverbs. That I, because I see she there, I, I, I'm wisdom. That's my nature. And then, interestingly, the Bible says that a wise woman builds her home. It says a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. So wisdom is another skill that we're giving. Another skill that we're giving is influence. All these things I'm saying to you, they're exactly what the Holy Spirit carries. So if you understand the workings of the Holy Spirit, you understand your workings as a woman. So it's not to force your way into anything. It is influence, wisdom, and the ability to help. God put all those three things. So when God brought them, left them in the garden, you know, then maybe Adam went to name animals and got carried away with work, as most men will. And the woman was looking for who to talk to. She knows you to just with her. So she was standing one day. The Bible tells us in Genesis 3 that the serpent now came. Satan. He said, Ace. Fine girl. Ace. Come. And she said, Me. He said, Come now. You're not dead to hear. Come. She said, Oh, me. Yes, come. Did they say you should know from this tree? He started gisting with her. And she got carried away. And long and short of the story, she shall eat the fruit. <laughs> Now, when God came on the scene, God now told them what would happen. I know some people say that God punished man. I'm not even going to go into that debate today. But I think that God was basically telling them what was going to happen. Now, see what happened in verse, um, verse 50. Okay, let me start from verse... I want to give you context. Okay. Um, let's start from verse 11, Genesis 3, 11. And God said, because God had asked him, where are you, Adam? And he said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, who told you? Okay? Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman you gave to be, me to be with, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled and deceived me and I ate from the forbidden tree. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, more than any animal of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Verse 15 is where I'm going. And then God said this, I will put enmity, I will put what? I will put enmity, open hostility, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And he shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. Now the interesting thing, is that when God came on the, on the scene, he said to Satan, the same person that you think you will use to destroy this thing that I have built is the same person that I will use to repair this. So this was the first time ever that the birth of Christ was prophesied and it was declared by God himself. So he said this is the solution to the problem. And that's the thing about God. God is proactive. God never tries to just solve a problem. And this is what I see today, everywhere I go, especially with women. You will make the mistake of choosing rubbish. I don't know, tribe members, Yayabi, I don't know the word for, I don't know another word to use but rubbish. You will choose rubbish and marry. Hmm? Then you will now start causing problem for those who are doing marriage right. By going on social media and saying things like men are scum, men are scum, which one is it? Men are scum. <laughs> Hashtag. And they start fighting fights that is unnecessary just because you have chosen rubbish. And there's a lot going on out there. 
the reason why I came this weekend is to remind you of who you should be listening to. God said to Adam, who told you? Ask your neighbor who told you. So the things you are hearing, what you need to ask yourself is who told you? Who told you? Men has come. Who told you? Who told you? It's out there. Everywhere on social media, you're hearing all kinds of things. And I'm used to them. They come for me, but me, no concern me. They didn't, they, when they die for me, we can have a conversation. Jesus died for me, so I will speak for him. So, don't be, for lack of a better word, don't be silly. Make the right choices before you get married. I hear a lot of people say things like, oh, but I believe, in fact, the one, that, the one I hear most these days, and I'm a marriage counselor. I've been doing this for about 16 years. I hear, I hear this marriage counseling thing there. Every day, you will see the signs very clear, Pastor. Very clear. Oh. He's not born again. You know he's smoking, he's drinking, he's womanizing. Then you will now come. Do counseling. You will not do counseling. Then they will tell you, Pastor M, I'm sent to him. <laughs> Deliverer. And I'm here shouting this weekend. Because I need you to understand that as a woman, you are the one that determines the outcome of your marital life. Nobody marries at gunpoint. I love you. You have a chance to say I don't love you back. It's not by force. So you are seeing all these signs. And, there, and, and if, there's, if there's a system your church has organized, I know a good church like this will have those. Go through your marriage preparatory classes. Don't jump. Don't bypass it. Say, what's in there? Go tell us. It's not, we've heard it. Now, it's not our pastor. He's always preaching every Sunday. They want to delay us. We have three months we want to marry. See, when you are in a hurry like that, there's already a problem. Once you can't wait, there's a problem. And when they are telling you to wait, it's not because we hate you. It's because you are the one that is in love. We are not in love. Our eyes clear. <laughs> we are seeing it. We are seeing that this, thing, this road where you they go, road no dead here. They're telling you turn back. You're saying no. Nobody understands him. That's the problem. <laughs> you people who don't know him, that's why. We'll shout and shout and shout and people will get married. The one that annoys me, Two months, they will not start putting quotable quote on Instagram. Hashtag. Two months. One of my daughters. That's how we're shouting. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. The same things that were red flags are the same problems she's having today. I told her. I said, let me tell you what's paining me. Is that you're not the kind of person they should be using to the example. And you know your life can either be an example for other people as warning or example for good. So which one do you want it to be? I told her today, I said, this, this thing you are doing, you know favor, you know favor me. But you see the problem? As Pastor Daphne shouting, don't do, don't do, you go. Even when you're having marital problem, she will hold your hand for a few minutes, then she'll go, my cordu, Pastor Kosfini. <laughs> you don't know? She will cordule him. You, she's, she's not praying, she's not praying. She's not praying. <laughs> She's not praying because all the prayer she prayed it before, you know, yeah, you cannot kill my sister for me. Ha. So draw your ears. We're talking now. Because these are the things I see. God, the person that is your father, you should be like your father. God is your father. God is very proactive. God will not create problem. How do you create problem by yourself that you will not be able to come out of? And I know some people will be angry, but let me just tell you the truth. Marriage was not created to make you happy. Marriage was created to make you better. God expected that you will carry your joy as a single person. Oh, if I just meet this guy, he'll be singing to me all, every time. He'll be praying with me. He'll be, let me tell you. Because I know that you would think that after service, Pastor Kosfini will go and preach to Pastor Ada. He's tired. The person that hears him preach the least is her. She deals with his humanity. When he gets home, he wants to eat. So you are seeing pastor now, you are seeing, there's a difference between the anointing and the human being, no? So you want to, oh, that guy can sing. 
when you don't play keyboard like this, like this brother now, you don't play keyboard. Hey, God. My children will just be, when they, from sleep, my children will be musical. <laughs> Message self where I carry a no opportunity. <laughs> Marriage is not about you. I don't know why I'm feeling the need to. I think somebody wants to make a mistake. Hear me. Hear me. Carry your joy. I always tell married women, carry, before, you, before you enter single girls, hold Jesus with one hand. Eh? Your more dominant hand. If you are left-handed, hold him with your left hand. If you are right-handed, hold him with your right hand. Then hold your joy with the second one. You enter marriage with Jesus and with joy. If you are looking for your husband to make you happy, you are fooling yourself. You know why? Because even Jesus, that can fulfill all your needs, he had to die first. Why do you want to put something on a man that is not able to do? And the reason why the man even came is that he needs help. Because we forget that part of the equation. You are a helper. So what do you do? You help where he needs help. So I hear women complaining. My husband doesn't help with domestic chores. He doesn't, he doesn't like to do anything. He throws his clothes all over the floor. Auntie. 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 We employed you to help. Oh. <laughs> if he throws his clothes on the floor. Auntie, that means he needs help for you to pick it. And do you know what, what happened? You chose this kind of problem. You chose this man that needs this help. You chose the one that throws his cloth on the floor. So you will get it. Can I be picking cloth for the rest of my life? Because what if it never changes? Because this is, I'm hearing all kinds of things. And I don't want to go into it. I, because, I'm, I'm, I, I, because I'm in counseling. I hear a lot, of, a lot of people throwing around words. Oh, men are this, men are that. Listen. Some things is just personality types. Now it seems like every choleric man is narcissistic. You have to be careful, though. He's just strong willed. That man, somebody can marry him and turn him to. Anything he says like this, she will follow him. She said, just follow me. Are you, you are, you are there complaining. But you saw him. You saw him. 